Good morning, students. Myself, J. Shankar from UC Department, Chevrolet Engineering College. Today, we are going to discuss about the Z transform. In the yesterday's class, also we completed uh, some part of uh, the introduction part of the Z transformation and find the Z transformation of a power n mu of n. If x of n is equal to a power n mu of n, what is the Z transformation? The Z transformation we got is x of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. This is the first example. Coming to the second example is also the same. That is, uh, the Z transformation is same, but uh, the input value x of n you can take as x of n is equal to minus a power n mu of minus n minus 1. These two are very important minus students. Coming to the second example. And now coming to the second example here, it's very, very important. These two are very important because for both the functions, for both the functions, the Z transform is same. 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse only. The difference is the region of convergence. The previously, the region of convergence is outside the circle, the unit circle. And here, inside the unit circle inside the unit circle. Now, to see the given X signal is minus A power N minus A power N mu of minus N minus 1. Minus N mu of minus N minus 1. So, in the definition, X of Z is equal to the sum of n is equal to minus infinite infinite x of n z power minus n. The definition of a z transformation. How to find out the z transformation of the signal x of n is equal to sum of n is equal to minus infinite infinite. The given x of n is minus a power n of minus n minus 1 z power minus n. Okay, this is a given signal. Now we can change these uh, limitations, change the limitations mu of minus n minus 1, mu of minus n minus 1 minus 2 is minus means the negative relaxes. So let us see the mu of n graphical representation is starts from the 0 is a 1, 1 is a 1, 2 is also 1 and 3 is also 1. Okay, what is a mu of uh, minus n? Minus means is a folded at the 0. There is no any change in the 0, the value is a 1 and now 1 will get in the minus 1 is also magnitude 1, minus 2 is now is a 1, minus 3 is a 1, and 1, 2, 3 is a zeros. Mu of minus n. And this mu of minus n, mu of minus n, now, now I am subtracting mu of minus 1. Subtracting the mu of minus 1. So, folded function, the folded function or mu of, uh, take the minus is a common here, take the minus is a common, mu of minus of n plus 1. Plus means is advanced function. But, you have to do for the folded function. One sample is uh, moves towards the left hand side. One sample moves towards the left hand side. Got it, my difference? If any can add for the folded function, it can move towards the right hand side. But the subtraction in the folded function means the left hand side. Okay, minus means the delay. But mu of n is there, you can shift towards the right side. Mu of n is there, you can shift towards the left side plus one. But the folded function, reverse operation. Or you can use this, the mu of minus of n plus one. Plus 
plus you can remember it is a advanced function towards the left side but for the folded function okay folded function is one sample towards the right left side so zero is now the zero and start from the minus one is a one minus two is a one and minus three is a one and so on so from minus infinite to and here also the so on So mu of minus n minus one value is a one with a range of n is equal to from minus infinity to minus one. Remember my students here, minus one. Okay, don't write it as a zero because it's shifted towards the left side with one sum minus a power n, and this value is a one after changing these limitations. Z power minus n. Okay. Now I am changing the the sum of uh, minus is already there. If you have the minus n is equal to, you can add one to infinite of the infinite to one is both are the same. So minus one to minus infinite. A z power minus one whole power n. So now you can remember here, my dear students. If you change these uh, negative signs in the summation, you can keep the negative power. Got it, my dear students? Is equal to minus sum of n is equal to one to infinite. Changing both the negatives is positive, and keep here z power minus one whole power minus here. It's a very important one. Now I'm doing this one. You see. When it is in the form of a power n only, we the sum of n is equal to n one n two a power n is equal to a power n one minus a power n two plus one by one minus a and n two is always greater than n one and uh, a is less than one. You know this condition. Is a very important uh, formula. It is a e power n only, the positive value. So I am changing this x of uh, z is equal to minus. Already we have sum of uh, n is equal to one to infinite, uh, including that it is a minus inside. So e power minus one and the z whole power n. So whenever if I am taking the minus inside, the minus a power minus one minus into minus is a plus and it is positive. Now it looks like uh, sum of n is equal to n one to n two a power n. What is the n one now? N one is a one. So a power minus one into z whole power one minus And a power minus one z whole power infinite plus one because it is a upper limit is infinite only by one minus a inverse z and already we have the minus is there in in front of that minus so anything power one this value will get the same infinite anything power infinite is a zero. Okay, minus of what is the value here? A power minus one into z whole divided by one minus e inverse z. According to this condition here, e is less than one. What is the e here? E inverse e inverse z. I am taking the e inverse z is less than one z by e. Is less than one and z is less than e. What is our voice now? Z is less than e. Remember that one. And simplify this. Take the e was z is a common minus e was z is same. Take the common 
A inverse Z whole divided by 1 by A inverse Z minus 1. What did my students? I'm taking the denominator as A inverse Z as a common. A inverse Z as a common. 1 by A inverse Z minus 1. So A inverse Z and A inverse Z is a get cancelled. And it is equal to 1 by 1 by A inverse Z. 1 by A inverse Z means you can bring that in the numerator. A inverse in the numerator is a A. Z is, Z is in between the numerator is a Z inverse minus 1. Already in front there is a minus Z. Multiply this minus 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse. 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse. So the same response we'll get for the minus A power N V of minus N minus 1 also. What did my students? The same thing uh, for A power N V of N. This is a transformation you can apply. It is the same 1 by A Z inverse. And for the same minus a power n, we of minus n minus 1 also. The z transformation will get the same thing. 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. But ROC is a difference. What is ROC for this one? ROC is z is greater than a. Remember this one. Okay, ROC for a power n we of n. And z is less than a. ROC for minus A power N V of minus N minus 1. Okay, to find the inverse Z transformation for the given 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse, it depends upon the ROC, the inverse Z transformation is changes. If ROC is greater than means, you can write as A power N V of N. If ROC is less than A, you can write as minus A power N V of minus N minus 1. What did my students? So see here the same thing they, they also did x of z is equal to minus sum of n is equal to minus infinite infinite a power n v of minus n minus 1 z power minus n. And taking the limitations here from minus infinite to minus 1, replacing the mu of minus n minus 1 is a 1. So a power n z power minus n. And minus v already there. I'm changing this signs as positive values and change the powers as a positive to negative and negative to positive. So here the positive is there, write it as a negative and here the positive negative is there and you can write as a positive. So why they wrote this a 1 minus means 1 minus because it starts from the 1 and is equal to 1. Okay. When you can substitute n is equal to 0 here, n is equal to 0 also a power 0 and a power z power 0. Anything power 0 is a value is a 1. You can subtract from 1 minus 1 minus minus minus. Or otherwise, uh, directly using this one, you can substitute in the whatever the formula we already know. 1 by 1 minus uh, a. After simplification, you will get 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. With the ROC being the set, z is such that z is less than a. Note that the Z transform is same as that of example 1. The only difference is the ROC. In fact, example 2 is just a left-sided version of example 1. A right-sided means mu of n. Left-sided means mu of minus n and minus 1. Why it is not minus 1? We can ask the question like this also. But actually, mu of n is starts from the zero. Okay, is a positive, including the zero also, it is a positive. So I'm not taking the zero because it is a discrete time function. You can take from minus one, minus two, and minus three minus two. But in the continuous time function, there is a in between minus one and the zero is also the values is there. So for that condition, they are taking there, it is a mu of n and the mu of minus n for a continuous time function. 
and coming to the discrete time function left side it means v of minus n minus 1 right side it means v of n left sided version of example 1 what it is example 2 what it matters students it's a very very important uh, examples uh, a power n v of n and minus a power n v of minus n minus 1 okay next one and here the pole zero is there the first of all i shown outside the circle the shaded area here in the gray color outside the circle a now and this is the shaded area is inside there is a gray color because it is z is greater than z is not the greater than less than z is less than a is roc inside the circle stable system previously it is outside the circle the shaded area is outside the circle unstable system greater than a what it roc the pole zero plot of roc of example 2 okay so coming to the third example here Third example, my dear students, consider the signal, consider the signal x of n is equal to 7, 1 by 3 whole power n v of n minus 6, 1 by 2 whole power n v of n. Okay. 7 is a constant, 6 is a constant. Now it is in the form of a power n v of n and a power n v of n directly can write so what is a a power n v of n z transformation is what is the z transformation 1 by 1 minus a z inverse what is a a here 1 by 3 what is a a here 1 by 3. so z transformation of the given signal x of z is equal to using this a power n v of n. I'm directly writing here the 7 is a constant 1 by 3 means 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse. Okay, this a power n v of n minus 6 is a constant multiplication factor a power n v of n. What is a a here? 1 by 2. So 1 minus 1 by 2 z power minus 1 okay z power minus 1 now you can simplify this one x of z is equal to x of z is equal to you can write as 3z minus 1 so z power minus 1 means it's also denominator only okay or directly here there is a 7 into 1 by 1 minus 3 z inverse minus 6 into 1 by 1 minus 2 z inverse. The final answer it is. What it matters for this. Or you can simplify the 7 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z minus 6 by 1 minus 1 by 2 z. Okay, is equal to, you can bring that in the numerator, 7, 3 is 21 z, whole divided by, take the count, LCM here, 3z minus 1, minus 6, 2 is 12 z, whole divided by 2z minus 1. Still, you can go for the simplification, but take the LCM of 3z minus 1, 2z minus 1 and multiply and simplify. Okay, or directly you can keep like this only simply. X of z is equal to 7 into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse minus 6 into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse. Got it? So now the ROC. So what is the ROC here? Previously, see. The given functions, this is also the a power n and it is also a power n. Z is greater than 
for this function z is greater than 1 by 3 and for this function the z is greater than 1 by 2 here the minus is there okay now the roc you can see for x of z to converse both sums in x of z must converse so we need both z is greater than 1 by 2 and z is greater than 1 by 3 and 1 by 2. Thus, the ROC is a set of z such that z is greater than 1 by 2. Why is this z is greater than 1 by 2? It is greater than the 1 by 3 and greater than the 1 by 2. So 1 by 3 and the 1 by 2. 1 by 2 means it's a 0.5. 1 by 3 means uh, is around the third one. So, one third and here is a half one. So, this value is greater than and from 1 by 3 is less than the value compared to the 1 by 2. So, thus the ROC is a set of Z such that Z is greater than 1 by 2. Z is greater than 1 by 2 only. The 4 and the 0 Full zero plot of ROC of the example. So I will show here. The ROC we can take here. Z is, if I am writing it as a Z is 1 by 3 here. 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 means a point, uh, point 3 around. And uh, this one is a point uh, five three 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 something. Z is greater than outside the circle here. Outside the circle, the first one. Z is greater than one by three. Okay. Now I'm taking the another circle here. This is another circle. What is R O C here? The R O C now one by two. Means outside the circle, is it greater than outside the circuit? So outside the circuit. So what is a common ROC now? Common ROC. If it is greater than 1 by 3, there is no any overlapping here of both the ranges. But in the when the greater than 1 by 2, there is a overlapping occurs for the greater than 1 by 3 and the greater than 1 by 2. Okay, so what is ROC? Thus, the ROC is a set of, uh, see the shaded area here. But I am not taking the 1 by 3. So, outside the 1 by 2 only. Okay, thus, ROC is a set of Z such that Z is greater than 1 by 2 because there is a overlapping. But Z is greater than 1 by 3 and Z is greater than 1 by 2. When we take the from z is equal to z is greater than the 1 by 3 here, but there is no any overlapping of z is greater than 1 by 2. So combine ROC or the right because the given function is the additive combination of the two functions. Understood, my dear students. Okay. Now the properties of ROC, the properties of z transformation is also there. Now the properties of ROC, remember and listen carefully my dear students, because uh, in the part A, you have to write the part A, there is uh, some questions and the part B, you have to write the some questions. Definitely these the properties of ROC of the transformation and the properties of ROC of a Laplace transformation is a 3D question, directly you have to write some points, uh, you will get the 3 or 4 marks. Is very important. No need to prove the ROC when they given in the part A. If suppose they given in the part to be means you have to prove that ROC is also the region of convergence. So first property saying that the ROC is a ring or a disk. Ring circle. ROC is a ring or disk in the Z plane center at the origin. See, is a Z plane we can take 
that r is a radius you can draw, draw a radius with a center with origin the unit circle okay the roc is a ring or a disc in the z plane center at the origin if it is a one or one by two it depends upon the value so actually we are taking always the default uh, the unit circle only okay and property to saying that discrete time fourier transform of x of n a discrete time fourier transform of uh, x of n exists if and only if roc includes the unit circle roc includes the unit circle when r is equal to 1 only then the transform becomes a fourier transform that to discrete time fourier transform discrete time fourier transform of x of n exists if and only if the roc includes the unit circle by the definition roc is a set of z such that x of z converges discrete time fourier transform is the z transform evaluated on the unit circle why i am saying this already we seen the x of r into z power not z e power j omega is z equal to the sum of n is equal to minus infinite infinite x of n z is nothing but r into e power j omega whole power minus n when r is equal to 1 nothing but the unit circle is a unit circle or we can call it as a disk also okay it becomes of x of e power j omega is equal to sum of n is equal to minus infinite infinite x of n e power minus j omega is the definition of fourier transformation for a discrete function sum of n. so we can call it as a discrete time fourier transformation is evaluated on the unit circle Therefore, the ROC includes the unit circle, then the X object converges for any value of Z on the unit circle. That is, discrete time Fourier transform converges. What it matters for us is the second property of ROC. And third property, the ROC contains, the ROC contains no poles. ROC is the region of convergence. Region of convergence is greater than the R and the less than the R and equal to R. The region of convergence contains no poles. Fourth property saying that if X of T is a finite impulse response, finite impulse response, remember my difference, FIR, filter, we can call it as then ROC is entire Z plane. Entire Z plane means from below the minus infinite and the below the plus infinite. This total shaded area, entire the Z plane. When in the finite impulse response, FIR, if X of N is a finite impulse response, then the ROC is entire Z plane. Not inside, outside, like this, we are saying <coughs> entire Z plane. Below the minus infinite and below the plus infinite and below the minus plus J infinite and minus J infinite. It is not at equal to always in the boundary, inside the boundary. The fourth property is saying that. What is the fifth property? If X of N is a right sided sequence, right sided sequence, right sided means outside the circle. I already told the S plane and the Z plane. The right side it is out, outside, the left side it is the inside and on the imaginary on the circle. The mapping here. The fifth property is saying the same thing. If X of N is a right sided sequence, then the ROC is extends outward from the outermost pole. Outward from the outermost right-sided. Okay. If X of N is a left-sided sequence, 
left sided sequence see here this one the left side this is a left sided this one is a right sided right sided means outside of the outer word from the outermost pole if x of n is a left sided left sided means stable system the roc extends inward from the innermost pole inward is a inward here i just students inward of the z plane okay the left sided sequence if x of n is a left sided sequence then the roc is extends inward from the innermost pole if x of n is a right sided sequence the roc is outward from the outermost pole okay if x of n is a finite impulse response then the roc is entire z plane entire z plane these are the fourth fifth and the sixth properties first property saying that the roc is a ring or a disk in the z plane is centered at the origin and the second property saying that discrete time fourier transform of x of n exists when it is exists on the unit circle because r is equal to 1 the z is equal to r into e power j omega r is a magnitude and omega is a phase angle then r is equal to 1 nothing but the unit circle the discrete time fourier transform of x of n exists if and only if the roc includes the unit circle and third property is saying that roc contains no poles the region of convergence outside inside and the on and fourth property is saying that the entire z plane is roc means x of n is a finite impulse response and the roc is only the outside outward from the outermost pole means the x of n is a right sided sequence and the sixth property is saying that roc is extends inward from the inner innermost pole means the left sided sequence got it my dear students remember these all the six properties definitely will get in the part a that has with the four marks you can write any of these four and there some more is also there the properties seventh property saying here if x of z is rational rational x of z is equal to the numerator is the a of s a of z and denominator we have considered as a p of z where a of z and the p of z are polynomials quadratic expressions and if x of n is a right sided sequence then the roc is a region outside the outermost pole if x of n is the right sided even in the given function x of z is a rational or rational in the form of a of z and the b of z where a of z and the b of z are polynomials and if x of n is a right sided then the roc is the region outside the outermost pole let us say here the x of z is equal to a of z by b of z a of z as a sum of a suffix k z power k and b z can be represented as a pi pi poles 1 minus p suffix k z power minus 1 p suffix k power minus 1 at z whole power k and simplify this we'll get uh, z is greater than the p1 and the other is a right side because x of n is a right sided 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse for example if it is a function but not understood this one function the z is greater than the 1 by 2 because in the two poles so 1 by 3 and the 1 by 2 so the causal and stable and the causal and unstable and the non causal i already explained this one is the ninth property tenth property and each of the term in the partial fraction has an roc being a set of z such that z is greater than the pi 
but it is a pi means uh, the one by two only. See so the pi here, ci by the pi poles, that is always greater than the pi not the pc suffix i. Each term in the partial fraction has an ROC being a set of z such that z is greater than the pi because x of n is a right sided. In order to have x of z is convergent, the ROC must be the intersection of all individual ROCs. Therefore, ROC is taken outside the outermost pole. Outside the outermost pole means 1 by 3 is less than the 1 by 2. So, you can take the outermost pole only, the 1 by 2. Then the ROC is the region of region the z is greater than the 1 by 2. But in my students. Okay. If any functions like this, the rational function, the rational function, in this rational function, the B of S having the poles, in that pole also, z is greater than the PI. That PI is you can take the ROC, is, uh, which is outermost uh, pole. Outermost pole. And ninth property is saying that a discrete time linear time invariant system is stable if and only if the ROC of H of Z includes a unit circle. Unit circle. H of Z is includes the unit circle, means inside the system. The system is stable if and only if H of N is absolutely summable. And only if the discrete time Fourier transform of H of N exists. Consequently, the property 2 ROC of H of Z must include the unit set stable system. So I already told causal and stable. Causal and stable. We see here the poles that are present inside the circle, stable system. See, unstable means any one pole that is outside the circle. So, I am taking the unit circle here, the, the pole is outside the circle here, unstable system. And non causal and stable, non causal and stable means uh, one pole is also in the outside the circle. See, this are the circle is there. The poles that are present inside the, this circle, causal and stable, the poles that are present inside the circle, and if any one pole is outside the circle, this is a non causal and stable. And see here, inside and the outside is also there, unstable system, the region of convergence. So in between the shaded area here, see, the shaded area is outside the circle and shaded, shaded area is outside the circular OC and shaded area is in between the circles, in between the circle. A causal discrete time linear time invariant system is stable. A causal discrete time linear time invariant system is stable if and only if all of its poles are inside the unit circle. All of its poles, when it is a stable body students, all of its poles are inside the unit circle. Inside the unit circle, then we can call it as a stable system. The causal and non-causal. If any is, is outside the circle means unstable.